right, so off to the next topic. Now we are going to be looking at another section that you guys always complain about or maybe, uh, maybe let me not say complain, but always seem to have a challenge with optimization. Let's yeah. talk optimization. What's your name? I got 100 on my dash, got 200 in my trunk Name in the grab bags for my trunk Like a rocker on the top of my butt like a long But if, if you were going to give us maybe a bit of your advice in terms of optimization What would be the best way to approach optimization? Again, okay. where do I start? Let's all say basics, awesome we we'll start with basics, but how are we going to get basics of optimization? Like, what are the basics? Okay, so the things that they ask on optimization problems is measurements. So they ask about measurements in optimization problems. They ask about uh, areas, perimeters, volumes, quantities. So those are the things that we can optimize. Um, and that means you need to know the basics of measurement. You need to know the area of a circle, perimeter of a circle. What does that mean? What is a perimeter? What is an area? You need to know a cube. What is a cube? What is a rectangular prism? What is a cylinder? So those things have their own information. They have their areas, volumes, and and, and, and all the, the, the general the general stuff about that. Yeah, particularly and, when you're given 3D shapes. When you are given 3D shapes, that is yeah. what you are going to look at. Yeah. And in terms of um, distances, then you... Oh, sometimes I've seen a, a question on on the amount of water that needs to be taken out of the ocean. And so all of those things can yeah. be quantified. Yeah, absolutely. All of those things can be quantified. So everything that can be quantified, make sure, I can't say check everything because that would be unreasonable. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you have the basics of everything that can be quantified. Okay. Your cones, your, your quadrilaterals, what are the properties of that? Mm -hmm. Because then you can relate them to calculus, which is just what is being applied in optimization. Sure, sure. So then you are going to optimize um, the area. Sure. So then you will be asked at, uh, what, what is the amount of sand or the amount of cement <laughs> that we need such that a maximum area is covered. Sure. And we know that when we think of the weights maximum or when we hear maximum, minimum, we are thinking first derivative. First derivative and then we make the first derivative sure. equals to zero. Yeah. Nice and one. Yeah, yeah, I think nice and also um, cost as well when, when you are asked about a uh, cost of of chocolate and so you so they will give you maybe a cost um, equation. So for you to be able to to get the maximum amount um, of, of chocolates that can equal this amount of money, then you have to again derive derivative. that cost. Um, if, if I can just quickly weigh in on that. Um, so the structure of the questions always yeah. follows a similar pattern, sure. right? So you'll always start with either an equation that is given or something that is required for you to prove. Now, why do they do that? They want you to prove because uh, in the event that you are unable to get that equation, you can still use it for the subsequent Good questions, enough. right? So for instance, just like you were saying, if we're talking about shapes, 3D shapes, uh, I could be looking at measurements, right? Yeah, I could be looking. And um, I, I think one, one conversation that we were having uh, before we started recording about measurements that unfortunately we assume yes. that people know measurements, right? We always assume that people understand uh, the perimeter of yes. a circle, right? Or in this case, the circumference of a of circle. A circle. Uh, you know, the perimeter of a rectangular, uh, uh, you know, of a rectangle, let, let's put it that way. 
so all of those things require you uh, sometimes to actually make some kind of manipulations. Now, let me, let me just quickly uh, weigh in on this. So the structure of the question is such that most of the time you will have two variables. You'll have to eliminate one. Sure. So you'll be given information so that you are able to structure an equation to make what you want to eliminate the subject of the formula. Let me make a point in case. Some of you are still unsubscribed. Bruh. Shares has been telling me that over 55% of you have not yet subscribed but have been enjoying the content. Please, why don't you go ahead and do the right thing? Click on that subscribe button. Let's go back to the lesson. So suppose that you've got a rectangular prism, right? They would give you the length, the base, I mean the breadth, as well as the height, okay? They'll give you the length and the breadth in terms of X, sure. but give you the height as H, sure. right? So now you know, in that case, it means that I can use the volume. Let's say they give you the volume. They say the volume of this rectangular prism is, you know, such and such. So, you know, if I take the area of the base multiplied by the height, that would give me the volume of this prism. So then you can make H the subject of the formula. And then they'll go into surface area. Sure. You most, see, most then they'll say surface area. So, you know, you've got different surfaces. I've got the front and the back. I've got the two sides. I've got the top and the bottom, right? Now, remember that part of that equation for surface area will have H in it. Sure. But I need to eliminate H. Where, how will I eliminate it? I will eliminate it by substituting the other equation in so that all my equations are just in terms, or, or rather, my equation is just in terms of X. So that is what you will be asked to prove. Right? And then after that, what are they going to ask? Find either the value of x such that the volume is maximum or the surface sure. area is maximum. Sure. Then I know that I'm going to take that derivative of the surface area, make it equal to zero, and find the value of x. If they're looking for the maximum surface area, take that value of x, substitute it into that original oh equation, and voila, there you have it. You'll notice that the structure of those questions is always the same. Either they'll be giving us an equation, or we will we, we will be uh, asked to prove one. Okay, right. That's optimization. That's <laughs> Actually, that is all. Questions. Questions. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. If, if you can just raise your voice a little bit so that we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So measurements, I feel like, do we cram it? Do we memorize it? How do we... Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's a good one. I've seen sometimes, sometimes they would give you, especially for those, um, for those shapes that are not popular. But for shapes that are popular, for instance, for the volume of any shape, it's always the area of a base multiplied by its height. So if I've got, let's say, a, a, a cylinder, yes. what is the base? It's a circle. It's a circle. Yes. So it's the area of that circle multiplied by the yes. height. Do you see? So if I've got a rectangular prism, what's my base? It's a rectangle, right? It's the area of that rectangle multiplied by the height. So I think those basic things you need to know. Okay, but then when it comes to shapes, for instance, if I'm looking at a a, uh, a sphere, a sphere, yeah, a sphere, a sphere. A sphere. you know, a sphere. Well. Yeah, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, now we sometimes I <laughs> think about <laughs> it a bit. But uh, for instance, I know the volume of a sphere would be four over three pi r cubed, cubed. right? Yes, because you're dealing you're dealing with a, a volume, right? But in this case, it's not something that every person would have, would know, right? Uh, so for that, for those cases, I think when they give you those shapes, most likely is that sure. they are going to give you the formula. You just have to know what to do with it. Sure. Now what?
Yeah, but uh, I think, yeah, uh, please make sure, guys, that you remember uh, your, your, your measurements, right? That is very important. Sometimes, oh, yes, very important. Uh, sometimes they give you distance formula. Yes. You know, the distance that a spaceship or a rocket <laughs> would move in space or whatever the case is, right? And um, they want to find out the velocity. What is the oh, relationship yes. between distance, distance or, yeah, distance, velocity, and acceleration? And acceleration. Yes. So, you know, yes. if I've got a distance formula, then the derivative of it is velocity, yes. right? Sure. The double derivative of distance yes is acceleration yeah. so those things are very important so please keep that in mind guys those are i think uh, when it comes to I, I, optimization yeah i think the last part was important yeah yeah, yeah, with, with yeah. The distance, absolutely yeah. absolutely any other question or receive value right. right i think in closing um on on this optimization issue please remember optimization is not a lot of marks guys yes. i'm not saying neglect it Right? Usually it's about Nine. six to ten marks. Yes. Right? Yeah, if you're not in <laughs> luck that year, maybe it might be twelve. But it's really not a, a lot of marks. So it's not something that's worth agonizing over. I would make sure that I just know uh, the, the the basics, uh, you know. And in fact, on all the other sections, sure. it would be quite important for us to know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any other thing on, on paper one that we need to so just just warnings just warnings, just warnings just warnings, yeah. warnings, just warnings. Mm. Uh, question two and three mm. we spoke about Eight. number patterns number patterns 